Now, how coumarin group of drugs like warfarin affects blood clotting? Warfarin reduces body's ability to make vitamin K, which interferes with protein creation. So, warfarin reduces vitamin K production, and vitamin K is responsible for the formation of blood clotting factors. So, by reducing vitamin K, warfarin indirectly reduces the factor level. So, that is how it affects blood clotting, it reduces the factor levels in blood. Next, drug interaction of metronidazole, penicillin, erythromycin, cephalosporin, and tetracycline increase coumarin potency. So, if a patient is taking warfarin and you prescribe this group of drugs amoxicillin, metronidazole, erythromycin, cephalosporin, or tetracycline, it will increase the warfarin's or coumarin's potency and it will lead to persistent post operative bleeding. So, you have to be very careful about prescribing these drugs if a patient is taking warfarin. Now, oral manifestations as I described earlier in my part 1 video, you can expect gum bleeding, spontaneous gum bleeding or bleeding after trauma or bleeding after block injections. Now, identification of the dental patient with a bleeding disorder. You have to take family history thoroughly if anyone suffered from hemophilia or other factor deficiency disease and you have to take the medical history of that particular patient if there is any spontaneous bleeding or bleeding after uh, trauma, mild trauma or uh, bleeding into the joint spaces and patient is taking any antiplatelet drugs like aspirin, clopidogrel or patient is taking anticoagulant drugs like heparin or uh, warfarin etc. So, history is very important. Next is lab investigations. If patient is taking heparin, then you have to prescribe uh, lab investigation for APTT. If patient is having vitamin K deficiency, you have to prescribe PT INR APTT because it increases in case of vitamin K deficiency. If patient is taking coumarin anticoagulant or having liver disease, coumarin means warfarin. So, in this case, you have to uh, give the patient instruction to uh, investigate for PT INR and APTT in case of. Antiplated drugs like aspirin or clopidogrel, you have to prescribe only for BT test, bleeding time test. So, unnecessary testing for all parameters in a uh, particular patient is not uh, required. You have to give particular uh, one or two investigations for the particular uh, disease or particular medicines that patient is taking. So, snapshot this uh, slide and do it in your practice. Next, for a extraction patient or a patient before minor oral surgery procedure, I am not talking about major surgeries, I am talking about minor oral surgeries and extraction. Do you need routine uh, coagulation tests, preoperative tests? Many of us you prescribe uh, BT, CT, INR, PT before extraction also or impactions, minor impactions or minor cyst inoculation or uh, minor oral surgery procedures. Do we need that? It is not recommended actually. British Committee for Standards in Hematology, they gave some recommendations. Uh, first is that coagulation screening prior to surgery or other invasive procedure to predict post-operative bleeding in unselected patients is not recommended. So, who, uh, who are the selected patients? It is explained in the second point, you can see. A bleeding history including detail of family history, previous excessive post-traumatic or post-surgical bleeding and use of anti-thrombotic drugs should be taken in all patients preoperatively and prior to invasive procedures. So, to take the history, if the history is positive, then you can go for coagulation screening or you should go for coagulation screening. If the bleeding history is negative and patient is not taking any kind of drugs, then there are no need for, no further coagulation testing is indicated. But as I said that if the bleeding history is positive or there is a clear clinical indications like liver disease, a comprehensive assessment guided by the clinical feature is required. So, the blood test that I just discussed earlier, that blood tests uh, we, we have to give the patients. 
Next, how to refer to hematologist or cardiologist? If you are confused or patient is taking medicines and uh, you are in confusion that what to do, then you have to refer the patient to the cardiologist or medical specialist. How to refer? This is a uh, format that is standard format like this you can refer the patient to the specialist for opinion like uh, this just a format at 62 years male patients with medical history of diabetes mellitus and hypertension reported with complaint of pain on right side of lower jaw one examination grossly decayed second molar tooth Third point, planned for extraction under local anesthesia, 2% lignocaine with 1 is to 80,000 adrenaline. Four, patient is on dual antiplatelet therapy, tablet clopid 75 mg and tablet ecosprin 150 mg OD. Five number point, referred to medical specialist and cardiologist for kind opinion for feasibility of extraction. Like this, you can refer the patient if you are confused or you need any consultation. A management of oral surgical procedures uh, for platelet disorders if platelet count is less than 50,000 per mmq platelet transfusion may be required prior to dental extraction or other oral surgical procedures so platelet is more than 50,000 no need of do anything but if the platelet is less than 50,000 then you have to transfuse the platelet a consult with hematologist second if a patient is taking aspirin or propidogrel what to do should you stop or not now there are some recommendations what to do now the first journal this one discontinuation of oral antiplatelet agents before extraction is it necessity or myth Many of us, if a patient is taking aspirin, we stopped three days earlier uh, or one day earlier and do proceed for extraction. This is completely wrong thing. You can see the highlighted conclusion in the first journal, on the page of first journal, that conclusion is single and multiple dental extraction in patients receiving acetyl salicylic acid or aspirin or clopidogrel can be safely performed without discontinuation of the therapy with provided appropriate local hemostasis. So if you have to extraction single tooth or multiple also, the patient is taking aspirin or clopidogrel, you don't have to stop this therapy. Just take the local hemostatic measurements. What are those? I will discuss. Next slide, the ACN Journal of Pharmaceutical and Clinical Research, the title of the journal is dental management of patients with antiplatelet therapy in conclusion it is also saying antiplatelet monotherapy or even antiplatelet dual therapy like uh, aspirin and clopidogrel need not be altered or stopped before minor oral surgical procedures second point most of the post-operative bleeding can be easily controlled by bleeding hemostatic measures now what are the hemostatic measures I will discuss later on in, in this video for hemophilia management of uh, hemophilic patients uh, before oral surgical procedure. Now hemophilia A and B and von Willebrand disease deficiency pre-operative factor level of at least 40 to 50 percent must obtain. For extensive surgery additional post-operative factor maintenance indicated. So for minor surgery in hemophilia patients A or B or von Willebrand factor, you have to check the factor level and if 40 to 50 percent uh, is there at least then only you have you should proceed for minor oral surgical procedure. For major surgery additional postoperative factor maintenance indicated like DDAB, precipitate or FFP these things transfusion is indicated. Now, what are the local measures you have to do for hemophilia patients? If there is continuous, you, 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 you took all the measures. Factor level was there, you give cryoprecipitate 
after fusion with consulting with a uh, uh, hematology department but even after that if you see continual oozing of unstable fibrinous clot if there is oozing from the unstable fibrinous clot that require clot removal you have to remove the clot and repacking of the extraction socket with hemostatic agent so you have to do these things what are the hemostatic agents this is surgi gel microfibrillar collagen these are the hemostatic agents and you, you can uh, add in this microfibrillar collagen or surgi gel the tannazimic acid so this post operative bleeding due to fibrinolysis occur 3 to 4 days after surgery if this happens can be managed by local measures and anti fibrinolytics like tannazimic acid injection or the, you can give locally these things now hemophilia a and b dental extraction in mild to moderate hemophilia a or von willebrand factor this factor 8 level may be raised by dd abb without transfusion so for minor surgery dental extraction single or multiple you can raise the factor 8 level by this dd abb desmopressin acetate without transfusion of cryoprecipitate or other things other factors now just i said earlier these are the hemostatic agents surgi gel it is absorbent hemostat you can see you can just place these things in the extraction socket and suture it you can give microfibrillar collagen it absorbs blood and it facilitate the blood clotting next tranexamic acid you can give tranexamic acid and also you can use the surgical stent after extraction next thrombin tropical gel this thing is also very much effective for reducing the post operative bleeding fibrin sealant av cell this is also a local hemostatic agent these are all modern and very much effective hemostatic agents now this thing this slide is very much important if a patient is taking anticoagulant inr if he is 3.5 greater than 3.5 no surgical interventions refer to the patient if inr is less than 3.5 minor oral surgical procedures you can do like extraction etc so here if greater than 3.5 we have to refer the patient to oral surgeon or we have to consult with the hematologist or cardiologist if less than 3.5 inr minor oral surgical procedures extraction etc you can do and if inr is less than 1.5 for major surgical procedure you can go for major surgical procedures if the inr is less than 1.5 in uh, conclusion patients with bleeding disorders appropriately prepared preoperatively are generally be generally as able to withstand dental care as well as unaffected individuals consultations with the patient's physician is recommended for guidance on medical management required for high risk surgical dental patient so take home messages take medical and family history carefully advise lab investigations judiciously for any surgical procedure local hemostatic agents should be kept ready for non coagulopathy management always follow surgical guideline these were my reference thank you very much